Hello and welcome back and that's right today's video is going to be a biggie. This is how to set up a QNAP NAS for video editing and in this video which is probably going to be some 40-50 minutes long minimum if I do get it under that number you know on the time bar below I'll be really impressed. I'm going to make this video for you people out there that are trying to set up a QNAP NAS right the first time for all of your video editing needs. Your Final Cut Pro, your Adobe, your Elements. In this case, we're going to be utilizing today um, Movavi, although of course there are lots of other different kinds of video editing suite out there. But we're going to be using Movavi just as our case example. We used Elements in a previous video with the Synology. But in this video, I'm going to walk you through the best way to set things up. And in some cases, I'm going to show you exactly how to do it. In other ones, I'm going to point you in the direction of how to know uh, all the setup for it. So before we go any further, one of the most important things to highlight is the base level amount of setup on your QNAP you're going to have need to have done prior to this video. And by base level, I mean you've got your QNAP, you've installed your hard drives, you've taken those hard drives uh, and, uh, within the system, created your RAID, and set up a volume. Now, if you don't know how to do any of those things, because they would take a good 15, 20, 25 minutes to show you on this video, I'm not going to. But I have made several videos already in the past about how to set up a QNAP NAS. They're all on here on screen, alongside how to make the NAS as secure as possible in terms of security settings, and how to set the device up for your backup routines as well. And I've got a huge playlist of around about 40 to 50 videos that will walk you through all of that, and that will be linked below. But this video, you've got to make sure you've got your drives installed, QTS, the software installed, or QUTS, your storage pool created, and your volumes. So once you've done all of that, come join me right here on the video. But for now, let's carry on. So uh, in this video, we're going to be covering uh, mainly five parts. Part one is going to be about shared folders and ultimately where your data lives in the system. The second part is going to be about the network connection and how you connect with the device, be it 1GB, 10GB, and how you set about doing it. The third one is going to be about mapping the uh, drives on the NAS or creating iSCSI uh, LUNs, which are blobs of independent storage and have them connected to your PC or Mac system. In part four of this video, we're going to be talking about uh, utilizing QNAP's own QSync drive, uh, which allows you to uh, interact with the NAS using your native file and folders and then file pinning and file streaming and stuff like that. And in the conclusion, we'll summarize everything we've gone through and a few little tips along the way. So let's crack on with that first part there the storage folders. So as mentioned, we've already created our RAID configuration in here. That's where all of our drives, we've already installed it and we've added them together to create our RAID. RAID um, is when you've got a bunch of drives all put together to create a storage pool and that is our storage pool. We've gone for a RAID zero here, but you can go for all the different ones. Again, these videos up here will talk you through uh, the difference between different RAID configurations. Most users, if you've got at least four base, will go for a RAID five, but you can go for more. Once you've done that, the RAID storage pool is the bottom. On top of that is your volume. Your volume are like containers and storage where you're going to put all your data. So if you're running the NAS just for yourself, you might have one big volume for all of the footage that you captured that you're going to edit later on. You might have another folder that's, you know, for your media, your Plex, stuff to watch on your sofa. You might have another one for surveillance and backups, okay? So that's what you kind of need. You've created your storage pools and you've created your volumes. And they'll be distributed there and visible on screen to go into the storage area. And it's also recommended at that point you create snapshots. And again, I'm not going to go into the details of what snapshots are in this video. But again, go into the setup uh, uh, videos here. And in part one and two of this series, you will find how to set up snapshots effectively. And again, all of those are linked in the description below. So from here, the next thing we want to do is create an area on the NAS where all of our footage that we're going to be editing later lives, okay? So again, for that, you've got a few options. One, you can go into File Station here and create a new shared folder. Now, as you can see, I've already got the default folders it gives you when you set it up, and I've got one called Test Folder. But let's say you want to create a brand new folder uh, in this system that allows you to deposit all of that data that you're going to be editing with. So if we go for that, we select uh, shared folder there on screen. We give it uh, a name, so we're going to go for this. We're going to call this 
video archive okay or just video arch okay again we can say where it lives which one one of those volumes that we've created we want to put it in we can choose whether we want to encrypt it if we do encrypt it that will lower the performance a little bit but it will also mean that anytime anyone wants to interface with that they will need the encryption key which you can then save uh, so that uh, uh, the individual systems won't need to do that every single time but it also means if someone steals the drives from the system if they don't have the encryption key they can't get in but if you lose that encryption key which is either a full hexadecimal uh, code um, uh, alpha alphanumeric code I should say or a downloaded key uh, file if you lose either one or both of those it's game over so I'm not going to enable encryption but you can next up you have to assign which users on the device are going to have access to this now I've already got the admin disabled for security reasons and I've created a sub admin account but you can go ahead if you choose to create a new user just for these purposes so say you've got multiple editors that are going to be connecting with this device what you can do is go into the control panel select user groups and then if you choose to create a brand new user with this user having access to just your folders or seeing read only or whatever you want to do so for example if we wanted to create a brand new user we'll call this user alan again we want we can assign them to a group if we choose so if you've got team members uh, editors you can create a brand new user group if you like or just go with the existing groups and then on top of that you can say the permission this user has so there you can go we've got our user alan and whenever you're ready you can go ahead into the alan account and then from there if you wish you can go ahead and edit this user's credentials you can edit passwords all kinds of stuff there very very easily sorry that was a group we wanted to create a user so again creating users lovely and easy give them a password if you wish it's up to you how difficult you want that password to be from there edit the access permissions all that stuff you can go ahead put that on there click create and that will create that user Alan which again we can assign to those groups now a shared folder on uh, that you create on your QNAP NAS that is going to be a folder that you can remotely access in a number of ways but it's not the highest performing way to do it and the most high performance way to do it is utilizing uh, an iSCSI LUN now a LUN is a blob of storage a, um, a logical unit number drive it's basically storage that has a, a, a numerical defined definition and to do that go into the iSCSI and fiber channel manager here now from there you can go through the walkthrough services or you can go ahead and just go ahead and let it kind of walk you through the whole thing or do it independently yourself but for now what you want iSCSI manager to do we're not going to go for the configuration wizard I'm just going to talk you through it so the first thing we need to create is ourselves a target an iSCSI target is effectively a definition a doorway we're creating on the NAS which we can then mount on our local system in order to interact with the NAS using our own software again in this case um, Movavi but again this applies to Final Cut it applies to elements it applies to everything so select iSCSI target from there it will tell you what you're knocking up there so we'll give it a name so we're going to call this one QNAP vid or uh, QNAP video again it has an alias of the word QNAP anyway you can add if you choose to other things to uh, benchmark and test the system but you don't have to do any of that from there click next chap is uh, an authentication methodology you can utilize again there isn't strictly a nice guzzy manager on the mac side but i will talk about that later on if you're a windows user you might be more familiar with this but if you want another degree of authentication and access you can enable chap there then click next and as you can see we've already got the target there the doorway created and what we can do is have that box ticked there which allows us to click apply and then from now we can create our area of storage that we want to play with so again we're choosing that storage pool that we create uh, that i showed you earlier at the beginning on top of that you can go ahead and choose whether you, what kind of provisioning you want and the amount of provisioning you use 
will depend on whether you want to utilize just the amount of storage you've got there for high performance or you plan on adding more data and extending and changing the size of the storage area down the line so that will mean either go for thick allocation which fixes it or thin provisioning which again will just go ahead over time um, and allow you to expand that so then we'll give it some space so as i've got 37 tb to play with i'm going to create a 10 terabyte lunt that's 10 terabytes of storage now that are going to live slightly outside of the traditional qnap nas storage there again flick down we can choose if we want a certain sector size which may differ depending on your own software but it won't make a tremendous amount of difference um, then click next and then we create our 10 terabyte LUN of storage. Now that's going to take a bit of time there in the background. So for this part of the video, I'd like to talk about the difference between what we've done so far because we've already created that shared folder earlier on. We've also created or in the process of creating a nice SCSI target. Why would we do that? Well, because when you're using a video editing software on your local Mac or PC system, one of the problems you may encounter is that some software is well aware that the NAS that it's trying to communicate with, where all of your video editing data lives, isn't local. Now, what does local mean? Well, if we make our way into my PC, local is the difference between the drives you can see here on screen. Now, my C drive and my D drive are two drives both ssds that are plugged into this laptop that i'm editing they are classified as local these two drives represent two NASs that are in this office i've connected to over the network i just happened to have powered them down so the system knows that these two are local drives and these two are remote and some editing software will not let you interact with remote software some will but a lot will not. Now, the reason for that is that remote software is heavily dependent on your network connection. In the case of this QNAP that I'm using here, I'm connected to this NAS via two connections. I've got a one GBE connection, which is a standard one gig port that goes into all your switch and your router and all that stuff. But I've also got a 10 gigabit connection. Now, 10 gigabit allows 1000 megabytes per second bandwidth or a, a, a channel to work with you will you'll need enough drives inside to you know get that performance but with 10 gbe you can create that connection and as you can see i've got two ways to interact with this drive one gbe and 10 gbe and as you can see here i'm accessing the device here at the top uh, on 192 so it's a one gigabit ethernet connection that means i'll be limited to 100 to 109 meg megabytes if i'm going to edit video 1080 maybe even 4k i'm going to need a lot more performance and that's why other network connections would be needed now if we go in we can see our lun is almost ready it's at 94 percent there so while it does that, I'm going to show you the first way to connect with your NAS remotely, that mapped network method I mentioned earlier. So say, for example, we make the switch over the 10 GBE connection. I'm going to stop Chrome constantly trying to connect. What we do within the QNAP QFinder application, that first app you would have installed to set the device up for the first time, head down and right click and select the option for network drives. It will ask you what protocol you want to use, but you'll be fine in most cases with SMB as the default protocol. But again, it can differ depending on your OS. Go ahead and click OK, and then enter the credentials that you are going to use to connect with it. Now, remember when I showed you multiple account creation? If you've created an account for someone else, or you want to create a connection on a specific PC, for another user that you made sure to change the access credentials for use the account details here that you created i'm using different ones but go ahead and enter them there and if this is a secure pc remember those credentials and what it will do is now list all of those sh uh, shared folders on the nas so remember when i showed you all of the different files and folders on this nas all of these here on the left hand side of the screen well, now all of those are visible in the QNAP QFinder application. 
So let's bring those shared folders up. And as you can see, there is our video arch folder. And there is all of that data that we uploaded to the NAS earlier. But now it's visible within the Windows Explorer. So what we want to do is find that folder, right click, and then select the option Map Network Drive. Give the drive a letter. So remember, remember what I'm showing you now is for Mac, uh, for Windows, but the Mac steps will be very similar and give it a letter. In this case, I'll give it the letter Q. From there, we can say that we want to reconnect at sign in, click finish. And now when we go back to that My PC, we've got a new remote access drive. That video arch, we've now bolted on the QNAP storage that we added earlier on here in File Station but we've made it accessible on our local PC. Now, as mentioned, as good as this is to be able to interact with the NAS locally using your own operating system file manager, not all editing suites will allow it. Now, I believe Mavavi will let us. So for example, if I want to add media files, it will allow me to go into the list of available drives. And there on the list of available drives is VideoArch, so I can double click it and I can go it if I choose, select say three of these files, click open. And now it's adding these three files to Mavavi and allow me to edit them locally on my P or on this PC. And it's holding them there, even though they're not actually residing on the PC. These all live remotely on the NAS. And I can go ahead if I choose, drag those in, apply effects, um, come out of it there. And again, we can do all the bells and whistles that we expect from this editing suite. But bear in mind while we're doing this, that again, there are some file, uh, some video editing programs that will not play with a mapped network drive or will give diminished performance in a mapped network drive. And for those cases, that is when you want to start looking at locally appearing drives utilizing iSCSI. Now, our big drive that we created earlier, that 10TB is now created there. So what we want to do now is get our PC to see that storage with the appearance of local while Mavavi is trying to upsell itself while we're trying to work. So what we need to do is utilize an iSCSI manager. But if you're a Mac user, there isn't a native, at least at the time of recording, native iSCSI manager available to you. Now, there are free third-party ones out there. There are paid-for third-party ones as well. And these allow you, while well, Mavavi is getting up in my grill, to connect to an iSCSI drive on your Mac system. Again, I'm not really going to recommend any because I've not tested them all personally. I know Eddie has. So if you do contact us at the free advice section, I'm sure Eddie will make a recommendation for you to attach an iSCSI drive, a LUN, to your Mac. But for Windows users, the tool you want to use is known as the iSCSI initiator tool. It's included in Windows 10. I'm sure it's in 11 as well. And when you open that app up, it looks a little something like this. You won't have all of these drives listed, but it looks like that. So we'll go back. Now, on the iSCSI initiator tool, the first thing you need to do to bolt on your Mac system, uh, um, uh, your QNAP NAS storage that you've created there, first thing you need to do is go to the Discovery tab. From Discovery, select Discover Portal. Then in the IP address, enter the IP of the NAS. Now, again, if you're using one gigabit ethernet or 10 GBE, it's gonna make a difference which IP you use. So in my case, I know that this IP here is 10 GBE connected. So I enter 169.254.1.178. And that will allow us to discover the iSCSI LUN that we've created. Click Advanced, and this will allow you, if you did enable any authentication, any security login credentials there in CHAP, to enter them there. You can also choose if you want the system to default into any particular iSCSI adapter if you're running different instances. But for now, click OK. Then click OK. It will take a moment and it will kick you back after about a minute or so into the iSCSI initiator as it prepares and searches that IP for the available iSCSI based LUN and that target.
Now when you've entered that information, head back into the iSCSI initiator and select targets and you will see a brand new entry has appeared. In my case, as I say, I have a lot of NASes showing, but you should see a brand new entry here based on that iSCSI target and LUN you created earlier. So click it where it says inactive and then click connect. From connect, it will ask you to verify that this is indeed the correct one and that you're adding it as a favorite target. Also, make sure to click Enable Multipath. This will uh, be a great deal more useful when you're editing multiple files at once. Again, you can change a lot of the local IP adapters if you have different ones available, as well as changing its identity very quickly if there are multiple connections available. So, for example, if you've got a 1GBE and a 10GBE connection, it will uh, understand that both of them are available, and you can fix it to the 10GBE connection if you've got one to ensure that you never accidentally connect to the one gigabit ethernet connection then click ok what will happen now is you can see that that iSCSI target uh, and, and the LUN therein are connected from here click ok now on a Windows PC go back to the start menu on the bottom left I apologize because my head is in the way here but if I move me out the way I'll move me up here temporarily down here at the bottom type in disk management and a new option create and format hard disk partitions appears click that option I'll just go back into OBS switch myself back down there while we've got the chance slight lag and then from there as you can see this lists the available drives on your local PC but what's interesting is now a new drive has appeared it knows a new drive is connected and this is that new 10 terabyte drive that we've bolted on make sure not to have mbr selected that's traditionally used for os's um, let make sure it's gpt after that click ok and if you scroll down to the bottom of this list of drives so if we scroll it open a new 10 terabyte drive is now visible on our local pc right click select new simple volume click next if you want to change the size go for it there give it a letter in this case i'm going to go give it the letter o from there click next and from there name it so i'm going to call this one editing drive change the file system if you choose it shouldn't make a difference on most os's these days but for, to choose if you want to format it you don't need to though you can do the quick format click next click finish and what that's doing now is doing a very quick format of that 10 gbe drive uh, that 10 tb uh, storage LUN that we created there for editing and now if we come out of that go back into our list of available drives and now not only have we now got the video arch drive from earlier but now we should have if we refresh this page and i'll stop accidentally dragging stuff around the screen our list of drives should now be updated and as you can see now now not only have we got the video arch drive but now we've got the c drive the d drive and now the nas looks local the system thinks it's a local drive which is exactly what you want and of course now we're able to use editing software that allows us to add um, drives from there and we will have a much higher performance of any files and folders inside not tremendously depending on the file sizes but if we choose to, now we've got the editing drive, which has the appearance of a local drive that we can connect to for our editing suite. Now, coming out of that software, we can make our way back into the NAS because there is actually a third way in which you can synchronize your PC and Mac systems and probably the most convenient one with the NAS for all of your video editing needs. And for that, we need QSync. Now, QSync is a really interesting program. It's available for pretty much everything, whether it's Windows, Mac, 
Android, uh, Linux based OS is, it's available in a lot of platforms. You can run it directly through your mobile phone if you choose, but ultimately the idea is, is to create a shared drive area that's synchronized between all of your different hardware, be it your MacBook, be it your tablet, your phone, your editing machine, your typing machine, all of them can have a folder they can all communicate with simultaneously and all of these systems are seeing the contents of it without necessarily taking up all the room on their system. It's predominantly used for backups, but the QSync application is a great app that arrives with every QNAP system. Now, in order to really show it to you and its benefits, I'm going to walk you through the installation and then go through some of its main benefits there. So if we go back into our QNAP NAS here, we have to go into the App Center. And in the App Center, we need to select the app not uh, app known as QSync Central. Now, I've already installed it, but if you go to the QTS Essentials, you'll find QSync Central very close to the top available there. Also, if you're planning to access the NAS remotely, you may also wish to install my QNAP link, but I'll talk about that at the end of the video with regards to some of the tips and tricks. But go ahead and install the QSync Central application. Once it's done, it will either appear on your desktop or you can access it here by the list of available options. <clears throat> Also make sure while you're doing that to go to the download section of QNAP um, uh, QSync and download the appropriate version of QSync for your local system. I've already done that and I'm utilizing the Windows client here, but more on that in just a moment. Back in QSync, open up the application from within the NAS and you'll be presented with lots of options here. Now this is where you create the uh, mapped drive area as well as versioning control and retention policies of QSync. Now I know that's a lot to take in, but stay with me. So straight away, what you want to be able to do from QSync is select which folders you want accessible in QSync. Now this can come into different versions. So for example, remember earlier when we created the video art shared folder, we can go ahead and grant access to this in QSync. So now, once we've set up QSync on uh, this device, and as well as giving you the option to install it on a bunch of other devices, that folder that we created earlier on and filled with a bunch of images and video is going to be accessible. But there's more to it than that, because not only have we now got access to it, now, oh no, that's not the right option, ignore me clicking that shared folder permission there, as we've already done that earlier in the video. Next, we can go ahead with versioning control. Now, versioning control allows you to create historical um, versions of the files being stored on the NAS system. Now, you can extend that to a number of different ways. So, for example, you can have it to the individual shared folders that you've created, or you can go ahead into the team folder and create a brand new team folder that exists outside of everything we've created thus far. It's much like a shared folder, but the team folder lives specifically from within the QSync area. So for example, we can select that QSync area, create our new folder, so we're gonna to have to create it there. Next up, we have to make our way into the QNAP side client here on the Windows machine. So as you can see, I've got the information that I can log in remotely. If I'm using a remote access with a QNAP ID or a QID, I can enter it there or enter the LAN information if I choose. Now, if I select LAN, it will search the local area network for available NASs. As you can see, it's found our 10 GBE NAS. Go ahead and click select. From there, enter the login credentials. Once again, use the login credentials on the system that you create earlier on for the individual users that you might want to have access to. You can give them all individual logins with each user having permission to access this or create one master login if you choose. From there, we've entered in that login information. You can choose whether you want to restrict it to encrypted or secure logins, but otherwise click apply. What it's gonna do now, let's have a look. I've presumably entered them wrong. Let's have a quick look. From there, we can go ahead and click apply. And that will create the connection with this NAS on the local area to allow us to synchronize this folder on our PC. So in the case of the folders here, what I can do is click add. So I'll select a folder from within the NAS. So again, I'll select video arch or I can create brand new ones if I choose. 
click OK. And on the local PC, what I can do is go ahead and select QSync if I choose, click OK to uh, synchronize there, or select an individual folder inside the PC. So if I like, I can go into local users, I can go into the desktop. From the desktop, I can create a brand new folder, and I'll call this one QSync Test. Click OK. That's created our new QSync test. And from there, I can choose which files and folders on either end I can synchronize if I've got any preference. On top of that, you can choose whether you want to do space saving mode, something I'll talk about more later on, but click OK. And now, not only is the main QSync folder synchronized, but now we've synchronized that extra shared folder as well. Just to give you a little bit of uh, context, what I'm gonna do very quickly uh, actually, no, we can't select or add any more, so we'll come out of it there. Um, for then, click Finish. And what it will do now is start establishing this connection between the NAS and my local PC. Remember, this app is running on the PC. So why have I gone to the trouble of showing you all of this? Well, twofold. One, because now I've got a folder here on the NAS, on the left-hand side of the screen, where if I open up QSync... I've now got a folder here on my local PC that allows me to access QSync test as well as accessing any shared folders I've choose to have created over time. All of this living from within this local machine here. I've now pinned that folder from the NAS on my local PC and moreover from that if I go into individual folders because as you can see there's all our details from earlier. You may notice that all of these files have got a little cloud symbol next to them. Now that means that I can see the contents of the NAS. And if I click properties, not only can I see the contents of the data on the NAS, but it's taking up zero bytes. It's giving me the full layout of the data on the NAS on my local PC system, but I don't need to take up space on my local PC in order to do it. Now let's say, for example, this image here, I actually do want it on my local machine. Well, I can double click it, and then what it will do is it will quickly download it from the NAS and allow me to see the content of this folder. As you can see here on screen, now it's downloaded it. If I come out of it, now you can see that file has got a green tick next to it. And that means there's a local copy. And if I right click and go to the bottom in the properties, I've now taken up that space on the PC. It's downloaded it, it's accessible. And if at any point I want to free up space, I can right click and then use either the option to share a copy of this, utilizing its, uh, its location, copy it to another place, move it, or go into space saving mode, which allows me to either now delete the backup, uh, not the backup, the downloaded data of that, or always keep it. And if I always keep it, it goes dark green, and now that file will be constantly pinned to my PC from the NAS. Simultaneously, again, I can highlight all of these files, right click, and the only data that's gonna be occupied is that file from earlier. Now, if I choose to, again, right click, go to space saving mode, free up the space, and now it's deleted that data from this. Now, the reason I'm showing you all of this is while this is all being connected and accessible on there, if you open up Mavavi or any editing suite and you try to add files from that folder and go in, we find QSync there, we go into QSync test, we're still able to see all of these files and folders, even though they're not on the local system. But say we want to add these files here. So we'll add this selection of files, we click open, and what will happen is now, in the background, the PC is going to download these files now those files are in that shared folder that we're accessing and they're in our editing suite there. Now again, the bandwidth we choose to use, the network connection will differ on that speed that we go for, but now even though we're in that synchronized folder, we can still access them. And as you can see, they've all turned dark green as they're now accessible locally. And remember, this shared folder we've created can live here on this PC. It can live on my phone, it can live on another PC, it can live between a whole team of Mavavi where you stop asking me to look at your service, get lost. Um, 
What I'm saying is, QSync allows you to have shared folders on a multitude of different devices all dotted around, and therefore, all of them inputting and outputting will allow you to, I cannot get over how aggressive that app is, um, uh, it will allow all of those devices to be able to synchronize their data. And if you want multiple users to be able to edit projects, not only have you got versioning there to ensure that uh, people don't overwrite, but there is also support in more advanced NAS systems uh, for things like non-linear editing and copy on write or cow. So you can have read once, read many on some of the ZFS platforms, but these are more intense things that we should talk about in another video. And again, if you look at uh, uh, videos that I've made previously comparing Synology and QNAP, there's more information on things like copy on write and write once, read many support, which allow multiple users to be able to see and edit files, but not overwrite each other because files can be locked on a software level between them. So these are the best ways in which you can interact with your NAS using a shared folder as a Mac drive, utilizing an iSCSI uh, target and a LUN inside, and utilizing QSync, all of which can be supported uh, either in partial or full support within all of the video editing software that you can go with. Now, the end of this video is going to be more about tips and tricks and recommendations for you to make the most of your setup. I'm not going to talk about backups and snapshots and stuff like that, but I will talk about some of the things you can tweak. In my previous video, it was touched on that when I was talking about using a static IP or a dynamic IP, that there is no performance difference. And indeed, you were right when I was talking about static and dynamic dynamic IPs it was one of those things that I've always had in my head for 15 years because a tech guy told me but ultimately I just took it as read but if you are going to edit directly with a QNAP NAS over 10 GBE I would still recommend having a static IP the reason being that a lot of your software and a lot of your footage may be uh, locked to a certain identity what I mean is if for example, in Mavavi earlier on, when I've added these into my um, project files, all of these are going to have a location linked to them. And that location is going to be in, uh, potentially locked to a certain IP. And if you turn the uh, NAS off and then turn it on again later on, what can happen is if you've got it set to a dynamic IP, it can change its identity so this number 119 here might change to a different number due to a dynamic ip and only so many slots on the network which is fine for you to still access the nas and find it but your editing suite might have hard locked the uh, the um our project file there to be on that specific address so it's recommended if you're going to be editing files on a nas to go into the connection such as this one here in the uh, network settings, select the three dots, go to configure, and then from there, select static IP address and lock that address in with apply. And that means this NAS will only be accessible via that IP. Now you can reset it as a reset pin on the back of most QNAPs. And indeed, if you hold the copy button on the front, I believe for five seconds, it will reset its identity. Alternatively, if you do use the QNAP QFinder Pro application, and it, you want to revert it to a new IP or find out the old IP or change it back to dynamic, just right click, select configuration. It will invite you to log in with the credentials you've used earlier on. And then from there, you can then tune, you can reset the network identity if you need to reset it due to losing it on the static IP or that you've been you running on a dynamic IP for a long time switch to static and you've realized oh no my device i uh, all of the uh, editing uh, project files i've done so far are locked to that previous ip this allows you to reset the ip back to its original identity there next up remote access if you're going to be editing uh, on the nas locally that makes the most sense with video editing given the size of the files in question but if you're not editing a uh, hardcore video but you still want to access the NAS remotely you are going to have to establish a remote access to your NAS now again I've done a whole video about the security and setup of your QNAP NAS and you shouldn't go plan around with your remote access settings if you don't know what you're doing but if you do want to establish remote access to your NAS there's a few ways in which you can do it the easiest way is to use the my QNAP cloud and then from there you can create a free remote access QNAP account which means 
you're not directly accessing your NAS remotely, but you're bouncing off of a QNAP server that allows you to access and still synchronize all the stuff you're doing using that QID I mentioned earlier. But if you'd rather something a little faster, you can use um, VPN-based services such as Tailscale that allow you to remote access the NAS, but that will drop the performance level for you a little bit. But it does mean you don't have to play around with firewall and port forwarding settings. Again, I've done a whole video on Tailscale. I recommend you check that out. But when it comes to setting up a QNAP NAS for video editing, most of the decisions you need to make are done right here at the start during the initial setup. Performance benefits of things like RAID and the benefits of how you want to interact with the NAS, whether it's going to be that mapped network drive from earlier, whether it's going to be utilizing um, um, an iSCSI LAN. Let's go back down to that list of drives. So whether it is you're going to be utilizing the iSCSI LAN for a local appearing drive to take advantage of potential performance benefits, remote access drive that photo editors can definitely get away with even at RAW, or if you're gonna use QSync to create that mapped network of different connected devices between you and your other team members to collaborate together, that's all supported there. And all of this with the backup, retention, and snapshot policies built into not only those apps, but within the QNAP's own applications. So again, check out the videos I've made before. And if you have found this video helpful, do let me know. Um, again, I've made a lot of guides like this, and I'm hoping there's someone out there that's got hold of a new QNAP that they're gonna use for editing, and they used this to set up their perfect editing suite. And remember, all the steps we talked about today are useful for 1GBE, 10GBE. You can, hell, you can go ahead these days and get hold of very affordable 2.5 and 5GBE to USB adapters that allow you to directly interface with the QNAP point to point or you can go for 10 GBE to Thunderbolt adapters, which is what I've been using for this video, that allow you to directly interface connect point from your PC or Mac directly into the QNAP, no router or switch required, and edit directly over that high-speed connection. And all the steps I've showed you today will allow you to do that. Thank you so much for watching. I'm sorry if it's been a bit all over the place. There's a lot to cover in a short video, and I hope you found it helpful. Click like if you did, subscribe to learn more, use the links in the description to all of the other resources I've talked about today and other guides. And if you have found this video helpful, and you were going to buy from Amazon anyway, make sure those two things are true. If that is true for you, please use the links in the description to take you to Amazon. It costs you nothing extra to do it that way rather than just Googling the site. But when it does take you to Amazon via that link, anything, and I mean anything you buy from there, results in a kickback coming here to NAS Compares, which is only me and Eddie running this whole thing, just two guys. And that means that money allows us to, uh, us to keep doing what we do. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.